This is my office, and there's a few things that I want to do to improve this space. Starting off with some functional storage above my 3D printer. And this is mainly to hold my filament since the way I'm doing it right now is storing it in my closet. So I'm going to use this wooden trim and 3D print a bracket on each side so that I can make some shelves to hold my filament. First things first, we need to figure out the dimensions of this. I also grabbed the dimensions of the filament spool so I could design the brackets so that the spools sit upright within them. Looks like I got the tolerances for the mounts just right. It seems to be working well. Now we just need to see if this works on the wooden inserts. I thought that looked a little small, but it actually goes on there perfectly. It just friction fits right on there. So I think I'm good to go ahead and just print and hope for the best. <laughs> If I print both, it's gonna take around 10 hours. So I'm gonna print one as well as the hanging brackets. That way I can make sure that my design doesn't have any flaws. And then from there, I can start off the next one. Cause either way, I was gonna have to wait till tomorrow. I'm gonna go load this up. Check this out. You can see what this filament cleaner is picking up. So I've had my printer for about a year and I've only ever used this uh, PEI textured plate. I noticed recently that the more small prints that I do have a tendency to come off, but I started using a, a glue stick, which I don't particularly like because it gets a little gross <laughs> and doesn't look the best, but it works. Let me know down in the comments how you handle your bed adhesion issues. All right, so I have my fresh spool of filament and the plate is prepped. I can go ahead and launch this. So these are pretty good as they are, but I'm just gonna do some light sanding, remove the laser print, and just make it a little more smooth. One of my favorite tips is scribbling on the wood so you know which parts you have sanded and which parts you haven't. I did a rough sanding at 180. I'm gonna cut it in half to the right length. From there, I'm gonna take it down to a 400, I think, and then we're gonna stain it. I just wanna verify the length that I need for that particular space. So we're gonna go back upstairs and give that a look. I need 520 millimeters of usable wood within that bracket, which would allow me to stack eight spools side by side, which would come up to there. Yeah, I'm gonna cut the boards to 60 millimeters. <laughs> so uh, I missed the line, I went a little shy, but uh, you know what? I'm not too upset about that, that's uh, square enough. 59.6 centimeters, which is just under uh, 23 and a half inches. It's still above where I need it, so we're fine. I made the mistake of buying this Stanley. It's really nice, but it doesn't have metric, which is kind of annoying. Now I do need the trim to be of equal length, so I clamp them together and cut it again. I'm not sure why I didn't do this the first time. Three, three and a half, 23 minutes. It's still long by like five millimeters, so I'm not worried about it being too short. I plan for that. I'm gonna continue to finish off the sanding and then stain these and see how they turn out in the morning. All right, this one is so smooth, perfect. All right, so I think these are ready. I saw someone do this thing where they suspended the wood that they were staining and kind of wanted to try that. So I drilled a hole at the end of both of these and uh, put a little screw. I'm just gonna tie this around. I've never done this before and honestly it makes sense because I want to stain the whole thing because it's gonna be visible from all angles. Oh goodness, look at that. So here I realized that my brush was actually too wide and it wasn't allowing me to put an even coat and remove the excess, but more on that later. These finished printing and overnight I printed the other side. This one was printed upright like this. This one was printed on its side. The reason I printed this one upright was because I wanted the rail on the back to be more consistent. Although it doesn't seem like that was the case. Initially it would go on, but it would be very difficult to take it off. I had to actually hammer it off which means these slides don't have enough tolerance. I shaved off little pieces and I believe I know what is causing it because I was able to get it to slide on and off more easily. But this is modified, this is straight off the print bed. So the modified one doesn't even wanna go off of this new model. Yeah, 
So I'm gonna have to increase the tolerances on this. Also printing this one upright um, caused some issues with the seams in the overhangs. This one turned out a lot better. And despite needing support on the rail over here, it still looks a lot better everywhere else. I may actually reprint this one. This, I'm gonna sand it a little and do another coat just because I feel like I didn't get it even enough. I'm also gonna change up the method and how I apply this. Despite the issues, this is looking great so far. And those are gonna sit just like that. I'm going to modify the designs for the sliders, get those to print, and then I'm gonna start with another coat on these. Also, if you're enjoying this video and you haven't already, a like would be super helpful. All right, so I've sanded this one down. I just need to do that with this one, and then we're gonna put another coat. They have this nice tiger pattern. I'm going to stain them again, see if I can get it more consistent this time. I did like using the suspension method, so I'm gonna do that again. Although this time, I'm gonna use this sponge, and then I'm gonna use the brush to finish it. The best way I'm finding is to get a lot on there quickly and then wipe it away. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do this with a couple different layers, waiting about an hour or so between each one. Yeah, that looks a lot more even than it did yesterday. I'm gonna leave this and come back to it in about an hour or so, put another coat. So here I actually added a support in my 3D model. So I added this extra wing. Hopefully that adds some support because I'm gonna print it vertically because I had a lot of drooping because these are overhangs. If my printer's a bed slinger. I am concerned that printing vertically and having it go back and forth. So I added this, we'll see if it works. If it does, I'll print the next one. I hope that doesn't knock it over. It's looking okay so far, but this is stressing me out. That's so bad. But it comes off really easily. So uh, I don't know if this helped, but it, it printed fine. The support pieces came off really easily. And now is the moment of truth. Oh my God, that is so much better. And it's not loose. Okay, let's try this one. That's disappointing. I'm just gonna clean up this edge and I think we should have a good fit. Yeah, this is really smooth in here. So I don't think we're having issues on the new rail. I believe it is from this, specifically the side that's face down and had supports here. I'm just gonna see if I can flatten it in a little. It is a little snug, but this is a lot better. Yeah, it's definitely this bottom facing side. Okay, so this was a success. I'm gonna print another one of these, get them on the wall, and I'm gonna use this for the time being, but I'm also gonna print a new one. This one turned out way smoother, and I believe that's because I had time-lapse enabled on the first print. As you can see in these next two clips, when you take a time-lapse in the printer, it causes a pause between each layer, which can create some issues. This is a lot more manageable. It's the next day. I think I'm happy with the color. We're gonna go set it up and see how it looks. Yeah, I really like the color scheme. I think it matches well. Let's see how it looks on the wall. There's a lot of ways to do this. I usually measure from the floor to the height that I want, and then I'll put the object on the wall to get a reference. I put one slider up on the wall first, and then I put the shelf and measured where the next one should be. There we go. This worked out perfectly, and I was able to get it level, clean up, and start stacking my filament. This is actually how I'm gonna store my filament until I get a better solution. I'm just using Ziplocs with uh, desiccant. Every now and then I'll take the desiccants and I'll dry them out in the oven. I might make a short about how to do that, so if you're not already, do subscribe so you don't miss that. It also manages to fit the 250 gram filament without falling through, so the spacing was coincidentally perfect. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like down below. And if you wanna see more content like this, consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.